which is if you're going to start a business, why recreate the wheel and start from scratch? The best thing for you to do is talk to people with 10, 20, 30, 40 years of experience that are doing exactly what you want to do. And they tell you, this is what worked for me. And so you get to actually do that and try that out and then make tweaks and et cetera. So uh, that's why they say, don't recreate the wheel. Cause if it's already created, use that wheel and get further along than having to restart in the process all over again from starting a business from scratch. So I included in the slide, some of the most famous speakers, renowned, successful people, they all had mentors and they tell, and they talked about them during interviews. It was Oprah Winfrey. She talked about uh, Maya Angelou, how important she was as a mentor to her. Jack Canfield, who did Chicken Soup for the Soul and, and the Success Principles, which I'm going to talk about later. He had W. Clement Stone as his advisor. Tony Robbins one is considered one of the most successful motivational uh, uh, speakers of all time, you know, of our generation. Guess what? Even he had a mentor mentor, Jim Rohn. And so for me, when I wanted to start my career as being a speaker or whatever, I looked to Gary Turak. Now, Gary Turak was the National uh, uh, Society of Leadership and Success founder, and now he serves as his chief visionary. And he traveled all around different colleges doing speaking engagements. I ended up working for him and in 2008. And when I worked for him, uh, we wanted to help grow the society. And he's like, Tim, I will train you and teach you everything about how to become a speaker. And uh, again, I can't put into one training all the different lessons that he gave me, but he, uh, some of them are going to be in here, but he helped me out tremendously. So I'm actually going to share with you some of those tips that he helped me that you can apply to you if whether you want to become a speaker or maybe it's some other kind of business or if you have a business and you have to do a presentation, maybe you can use some of these tips, okay? So here we go. The first, if you're going to become a speaker, you have to write out a speech, right? So what do you know? What are you going to talk about? Well, Gary told me, he's like, if you only had one minute and you had the opportunity to share a whole world with your message, what would you say? And so by you not focusing on like a, a 45 minute an hour speech, having you visualize that crystallize that 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 main point, if you had that microphone and something that really hits you in the heart, if you're on your deathbed and this is just one thing you want to communicate to the world, that is what you write about right? That is what you do your speech on, right? Because then it's going to come from a deeper place, not just, uh, you know, uh, I, I think this is going to do well, or people seem to be interested in this. No, you're losing your heart, that connection, that higher self with what you're meant to share with audiences around the world, okay? Tip number two is write your stories because all you have is your life and your stories. That's what makes you, you. And if you don't have stories, then all you have is no, is what you know, meaning things that you've read or researched. Unfortunately, a lot of people, they just don't read books. So if you are a person who actually reads books, well, guess what? That already makes you, I'm again, I'm making up this number, the top 20% of any kind of group or population or people that you're talking with in terms of knowledge. So you can add value or put in your stories or your speeches, not things that you necessarily experience, but things that you've read about from different experts and authors who've lived those experiences because those authors and those people can't be at all the places at all the same time. And guess what? You're giving them credit because guess what? It's adding value for people. So that's what, exactly what I did. I had my stories from my childhood, my different sufferings. I also had these lessons that I learned about leadership. And that's what became my first speech. So then the next tip that he says, and this is what we used also in NSLS, the National Society of Leadership and Success, when we were coaching, whether it was celebrity speakers or authors or different individuals that they had to talk to a whole large group of students and faculty uh, and create speeches, right? Some of them have never even created a speech before. And we always gave the same advice, just like my mentor taught me. A great speech is simply two things. It's great story and great learning lessons, right? So that means you have stories that hit people on an emotional level, right? And then you tell your audience 
what they need to do or what they need to learn. <laughs> and the thing that I use for the image of this, uh, like an eagle is like, huh? Because that's your audience, right? If you just share all these cool stories, they still like, huh? I don't get it. You got to bop them over the head with what they're supposed to take out of this presentation, what they're supposed to get out of the speech, what is the specific action step. And, and that is what really makes, because again, not everybody is subtle to pick up on the theme or idea. They need to be, they, they, we're really yearning to be told, to be given an action step, an item. And so if you, even if you know in all of these trainings that I've been doing for all of you, I basically give you action steps. I say, here are some principles that I want you to get out of, out of these stories, right? Uh, and again, I don't call them laws, you know, uh, because again, who knows whether it doesn't apply in different situations or there's some nuance. I just say these are principles that have worked for me. Again, that's all I can ever do for all of you. I can just share my experiences and leave it up to you to decide what is best for you. So that was tip number three. Great speeches are great stories and great lessons. And then you have to write the speech. And so it's like, okay, now that I have stories, how do I organize that? What do I actually say? And so this is a good practice for any type of speech that, that you're going to give is you're always going to have an intro. Sometimes that could be a story or whatever you to kick people off. Or after they introduce you, you basically say, hey, everybody, I'm here to talk to you about X, Y, and Z. This is what I'm going to be talking about. This is what you're going to learn. Then you go into the main body and you tell them the stories and the action steps or the principles or the lessons. And then guess what? People need repetition. You know, I, I read on one of the feedbacks from the last training that we just did about networking, again, because I think it's very important is to collect feedback. We're going to be talking about that. And one of the, the comments was, Tim, there was too much information. And I'm like, no, I feel like, yes, there's a lot of information because I really want to give you guys so much, but it also helps if I tell you what I'm going to share with you, like I did in this training. I said, here are all the principles we're going to talk about. So some of you already read of them. I'm talking about them. And guess what? By dividing them into three parts, I'm going to have recaps because you're going to rehear what those principles are. And then that's what's going to help you uh, help those lessons sink in. So again, uh, tell them what you tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. That's that. Those are great speeches. And then the last thing to become a speaker, and this is going to kind of transition to our second part, which is about sales, is you get their feedback. So you're going to get their contact information, their first and last name, title. They may be, you know, the, the director of student life. They could be the president of a company, the vice president of a company. You need their email and phone, and you need to do is to print clearly. Now, some of you might say, do we need to print up all that paper if I'm doing it in person? Yes. I'm sorry, Trees. I love you. But people, if you tell them, fill that out later they're not going to fill it out. So you have to hand that out and, and get them people to actually write it. Now, again, all of these trainings are via Zoom. So guess what? I, you know, I have a Google form and noticed the most, uh, I got to collect that contact information because it's going to be helpful later on. But the most important part of these trainings is getting feedback. Why? Because you need to know how your, how your speeches, how your product or service, even if you have a side business or whatever, you got to collect the feedback. How would you rate this on a scale of one to 10, right? What did you like most? Can I use that as a testimonial? Because that's used for marketing material. And then what did you like the least? And then every time someone says anything negative about your presentation or what could have done better, you work on that. Okay, I have many examples where I've changed trainings and presentations or images because of the feedback that I got. And then you, you'll notice that the more and more practice you get, the better it's going to be. And then the last thing on that feedback, again, is another selling opportunity. Hey, would you like to join my newsletter? Would you like to opt in? Okay. Hey, are you a key decision maker? Do you, would you like me to come back and be a speaker in the future, right, for your organization? Now, asking the question, are you a key decision maker, is very important because if you had 100 people give you all these positive comments, you got all this contact information, but only two or three of the people say, yes, we're key decision makers to determine whether you're going to be coming back as a speaker. Guess who I'm going to follow up with first? Or if at all, it's those decision makers, right? Because everybody else is a nice to have, but it's like, I need to get to those people because they're the ones who are going to determine if I'm going to come back for a future speech engagement. Okay. So guess what? 
I'm going to share you my first poster. Okay, this was my first presentation, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, a couple years after college, I was working at NSLS. Look at that picture from me from high school. Uh, that, no, that was a college when I was a freshman in college. I look so young. And this was the title, you know, living a life of leadership, how to get ahead in relationships and career. And look at the image. We like, this was like old uh, image free, uh, you know, images when you type in leadership and you have this little icon logo. I look at it now and say, oh my God, this was so cheesy. But guess what? This worked. I used this to like go to different campuses when I was traveling around the country. You have a title and you have some bullet points and you have your bio, maybe a picture. That's all you need. And then underneath that is the date, time, and location where you would speak. Now, as I evolved as my speaker, as my speaking career, I'm like, I need more professional looking posters. And so guess what I did? I hired a designer. I even worked on the marketing messages. What could I do to make it better? So this was the second version that I made. Okay, now it was a little bit of an older picture of me, an updated bio. I started branding myself as like America's leadership coach for college students. I got this really cool designer to like do this cool poster to make it pop out colors of of, of leadership like red and orange all these other kind of things guess what if i look back at this now i can say yeah that was a really cool poster right i think i even changed the name of the the training to instead of enhance your career relationship to leadership as you start to learn about marketing different words have different impact and meaning so i think i eventually changed this to 21 ways to transform, to get ahead in your career and your relationships or something like that. So again, enhance is a very soft word, enhance versus 21 ways or all this other kind of stuff. So as you start to learn about marketing and what really appeals to people, uh, it, it's going to be really helpful. If you really want to learn about marketing, do you know what you can watch? the 10 o'clock news. <laughs> if anybody still watches news on the old cable or television, or, you know, maybe look up some YouTube videos, but they always say, a oh, question, is this a concern? You know, is this a problem to solve? And they try to hook you so that you stay to watch the news. Those are experts at marketing to kind of hook people to want to learn more. So creating titles about that. So my experience that I'll share with you, I wasted a lot of money on trying to look good, trying to have the most selling posters. Now, as I got older, guess what? I barely care about this stuff because it's not the posters that are going to make you, uh, you know, super successful as a speaker. It's how good you are as a speaker. And, and so now I want to show you what my posters look like after almost two decades of speaking. Look at this. It's a white piece of paper. I basically had a title, you know, I basically got a picture on either a free picture on Pexels or I may have paid like one or two dollars, centered it and then had some bullet points in my bio and the location. And guess what? I've had schools that say, hey, can you give us a flyer? They just need a copy of it for presentation purposes. They sometimes have their own designing pro um, departments that will spice up you know, my own poster. So I didn't even need to create one. So again, things are changing with digital media. So again, the reason why I'm sharing all this with you, because if I could go back and talk to myself, you know, almost 17 years ago, when I was starting out in my career, I would say, Tim, don't worry about paying a lot of money for expensive designing and stuff. It's wasteful. Learn the skills to make a good speaking presentation, keep it simple and just take action and move forward. As you make more money, then you can upgrade because remember it, go, it goes back to the trainings in level one where we talked about um, you know the biggest challenge leaders face and how to master success habits. We have to learn about prioritization. There's immediate business need, significant business enhancements, and nice to have. And most people who start businesses love to work on the significant enhancements or the nice to haves. Working on a poster is nice to have. The immediate business need is getting on the phone, calling, emailing a school and say, hey, you were interested. Can we set up a meeting? Those are more important than how the poster looks. Okay. All right. So let's move on to public speaking. So who here will take one or two comments, can share what are some of your best practices when it comes to public speaking?
Okay, Joy, I saw your hand first. Go ahead. Um, I usually ask my director, can I uh, practice in front of her? And I mm -hmm. practice in front of the mirror for myself or I ask my daughter, can she listen to my presentation? <laughs> nice, all right. So you're asking people to whether whoever it is, teacher, a family member and stuff like that to practice. Okay, great, great. I love it, I love it. Any other best practices for public speaking? All right, if you have any, please post in the chat, but for the sake of time, I wanna keep going. So I'm gonna give you six tips for some people. Now, some people might be really good at public speaking and you don't need this. Others may be struggling with it. So again, you guys asked for this topic, so I thought I'd mention it. When I was starting out my speaking career and I had to do public speaking in front of an audience of 150, even 10,000 people when I gave my graduation speech, here's the secret that I did from my communications class and my own teaching throughout the last two decades. Number one is write out everything that you wanna say, right? Uh, like get your whole speech out, visualize you writing everything that you wanna say, and then you can edit it, edit it, and work on it. Once you have your perfect speech of what you want to share, right, and good public speaking is only about like stories and things like that, right, then you have an outline and key words because the way we actually convey information, we need to chunk it down. It's too complicated to remember 150 sentences of a public speaking speech, but it's much easier to remember 20 key words or key topics of your presentation. So if I know that the first sentence is all about introduction and thank you, well then guess what? That's what I'm gonna do in my outline. Intro, next sentence, thank you. You chunk it down into key words that represent that sentence or that paragraph or that idea so that now you're training your mind to have a flow of these chunks of information so that when you share it, it comes out, right? And comes out clean. The next thing that I would do is I would get an index card, right? Because again, people do a lot of index cards. And so they're like, oh my goodness, and where am I? And I have to, no, have one index card front and back. I don't care how tiny you need to write, write it as tiny as it can be, right? Uh, and so you write each keyword right on the left, and then you write the little sentences or abbreviated sentences. Why do you do that? The biggest thing and fear when you do public speaking is what? I'm going to forget what I say. I mean, I forgot my line. Well, if you have an index card, right, or if it's just the outline, all you can do is hold it in your hand and you can just look at it for a quick second. Oh, yes, that's the point. And then continue. So this is your crutch. These are your, 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 your floaties. If you're going into a pool and you can't swim, that's what this index card is. But again, if you follow the next three steps, right? You won't even need this index card. Okay. Beth, I'm seeing your tips, write single sentences on index card and practice, practice, practice. You took the words right out of my mouth. That's what it is. Step number four is as Beth says, practice, 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 just like Joy said, but don't just do it like thinking it, do it out loud. Now here's my suggestion to take it to the next level, right? Besides practicing out loud. If you're going to go into a conference room or wherever you're going to speak, try to arrive early before anybody gets there and actually take a visual presence of the room. Okay, that's what this looks like. This looks like. And then as people start coming into, you know, and, and you have to give a speech or whatever, I would actually either, if they weren't there, I would practice out loud right there as if everybody in the audience was there, or I would get that visualization and I would go into the closet or the back room and I would close my eyes and I would pretend and visualize that I was talking to that whole room and I would do my whole speech. Then, once you do that, you have all the information stored in short-term memory as well as long-term memory because you wrote the speech, right? Then you never have to worry about what do I need to say, how it's, what, what I, you practice it so many times that you're good to go. The last thing to take your public speaking to the next level, right, to me is your intention, right? Do a little meditation before you speak, right? You say, what do I want to intend with what I'm doing in my, what am I public speaking? And you ask your higher self, like that all the words that come out of your mouth, that it serves the audience, that it serves the highest good. And guess what happens? You're going to finish speeches and you're going to say, wow, that was good. Like, you're like, where did that come from? Well, it came from your higher self, right? It wasn't you speaking. It was like all the things that needed to share. And then when, you're, when you've already memorized and practiced everything, 
that's when you can be extemporaneous. That's when you can actually be a little bit more witty. What if somebody makes a comment that you can joke with them and now you're interacting live and engaging and it almost seems like you're not even practicing a rehearsed speech. This is like just, what's your name? Tim Duffy is like, it's so natural for you that you have that all. And now you can engage with your audience. And those are the best because then it's, it's a miracle, right? It, we're being present. We're all in this together in this new experience that we never had before. So again, those are just some great practices. Thank you so much for watching this video clip about conscious leadership. If you are committed to helping to create more conscious leaders in this world, that is leaders with more humility, more integrity, more awareness that take constructive action, then consider helping us by making a donation. Our goal is to have 600 uh, conscious leaders develop before the end of this year. Currently, as of December 1st, we already have 400 members. And again, with your help, we can grow even further. How can you help us? Simply make a donation. If you visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash Electus Society, you can either choose to give a monthly donation and join, and you get different access to a lot of these different membership benefits, or simply make a one-time donation. Click on the heart support button, choose one, three, five, or type in any number of amount of coffees, hit the support button, and you can upload your card information on the secure platform. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And let's continue our mission of building more leaders. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.